Welcome back again. We are now done with talking about our map locations and our ordered pairs and coordinate planes. We're moving on to some fractions. I want to give you a brief fraction review. Remember, the number at the top of a fraction is called the numerator. The number at the bottom of a fraction is called the denominator. Alright, when you see something like this, these are called improper fractions. In a regular, perfect fraction, the numerator should always be smaller than the denominator. These are called improper fractions because they're not set up that way. Their numerators are too big. One of the things I'm going to be showing you how to do today is to take an improper fraction and make it work. In order to do that, we need to do what's called creating a mixed number. A mixed number is going to have a whole number along with the fraction. So what we're basically saying with this improper fraction is that we have the whole for something is made up of five pieces. This is telling us that we have 25 pieces all together. This is like saying we have 25 and we need to divide it by five. We need to see how many holes we can make out of that. So if I take 25 and I divide it by 5, how many holes can I make? How many 5's fit into 25? Well, that's 5. So the fraction 25 fifths, which is an improper fraction because the top is way bigger than the bottom, is actually the same thing as 5 whole pieces. Pretend that I have something like a chocolate bar and it's split up into five pieces. Okay, that's the denominator of my fraction over here, right? I have 25 pieces. So I have to make sure I have enough space for those 25 pieces. I'm trying to make these about the same size, guys. So you see, each one of my holes has, 20, has five pieces in it, right? All together, I have 25 pieces. So I have all of this. What I'm doing with that division problem is I'm taking the 25 pieces I have. See these little pieces in here I'm coloring in? I'm taking all 25 of those and I'm pulling out groups of five. The reason I'm doing that is because the denominator is five. It takes five pieces to make one whole chocolate bar. If I have 25 little pieces, that means I can make five chocolate bars all together. Okay, down here in this fraction, I'm saying that it takes four pieces to make one whole. And I have 12 pieces. So if I take 12 and I divide it by four, I'm gonna see how many whole, we can stick with chocolate bars again. Again, I'm kinda of hungry. How many fours fit into 12? Well, three, right? That means that if I draw my fraction bars here and they have four pieces in them because four is my denominator, and this tells me I have 12 little pieces. If I color in my 12 little pieces, you'll notice that I made four whole chocolate bars. And just like my division problem, 12 divided by 4 is 3. You'll also notice that I made 4 bars, 4, 8, 12, 16. So is that correct? Nope. Should only be 3. So always good to check and make sure that your drawing matches the math that you're doing. Next part of this, we're going to go the other direction. We learned how to take these improper fractions and turn them into mixed numbers. We are going to take a mixed number now and we're going to turn it into an improper fraction. So if you have a number like, let's say we have six and two thirds. This is our whole number and this is our fraction, right? If we're going to turn that into an improper fraction to look like this, what I have to do is multiply here and I have to add here. So I'm going to multiply, it goes kind of in this direction, okay? I'm going to start with 3 times 6. Well, 3 times 6 is 18. Then I'm going to add these two pieces on the top. 
So that becomes 20. My denominator stays the same. So 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. This improper fraction is the same thing as this mixed number. Let's do another one. Say I have 5 and 1 eighth. If I want to turn that into an improper fraction, I have to multiply the numbers at the bottom and add the number at the top. So I'm going to start down here and I'm going to say 8 times 5 plus 1. Order of operations, we're still following the right order. What's 8 times 5? Well, that's 40. 40 plus 1 is 41. That becomes the number on the top. And my denominator stays the same, so it comes right over here. So 5 and 1 eighth is the same thing as 41 eighths. We can show that, just so you know that this is the way that it all works. Let's take this one and let's flip it and make sure we can get back to this. If I have 41 eighths, that's like saying 41 divided by 8. So here it is. How many eighths fit into 41? 5. 8 times 5 is 40, and I'm left with 1 left over. Now, when you have a remainder, instead of just writing remainder 1, we can write the remainder as a fraction. I can take the remainder on top of the divisor, and look what we just did. This equals this. This is not something you're going to have to be doing on your own just yet. I just wanted you to see how it worked to make sure that we had a way to check our problems. So we should be able to take an improper fraction and turn it into a whole number. We should be able to take a mixed number that has a whole number and a fraction and turn it into an improper fraction. There you go.